DJI RS3 Mini, 795 grams. Designed for mirrorless cameras with an enhanced payload capacity of 4.4 pounds. 1.4 inch full color touchscreen. Features wireless camera controls via Bluetooth. Uses DJI's third generation RS stabilization algorithm with support for horizontal and vertical shooting modes. 10 hours of runtime, panorama, time lapse, and tracking functions. $369. What's up, y'all? Tight Shirt Terry Warfield back for another video. Hey, I hope you're having a great day so far. Remember to be thankful for your life today because you did not have to have that on with the meat potatoes. As you see sitting here on the table, there's a Sony a7 IV, a 24-70 GM, the original. And we know this thing is a tank. It weighs like 40 pounds. Mounted on the RS3 Mini. And guess what? It handles this with no problem. No problem. This thing is 795 grams and has a payload capacity of four and a half pounds. Now, why is that important? So I'm actually not a big fan of traveling with gimbals. They get in the way, they're clunky, and there are other micro gimbals out there, but the problem is, is those micro gimbals typically sacrifice size for payload. So being able to have a small gimbal that can literally slip into a backpack, you can actually break it down a little bit further into like half fold or full fold if you wanna like transport it or pack it away. But neither here nor there, even if you don't do that, having a gimbal this size that can give you this type of payload for me is game changer. Now I brought another gimbal to the party and that's the Ronin SC. So I'm gonna put this on the table. Now the Ronin SC has been out for a while, right? But I brought this out because both of these have payload capacities of four and a half pounds. Look at the size difference. We're gonna make more comparisons later on in this video. This is like almost half the size. So anyways, like I said, we'll talk more about that later. Build quality wise, it's labeled pro on the box. So that means that this takes a whole lot from its bigger brothers, the RS3 and the RS3 Pro. I mean, it didn't get everything, but the build quality is solid. It's got the NATO rail on the side. It feels really premium. It's got the touch screen. It's got the thumb wheel. It's got the trigger. It is really, really solidly built. And I love how with mirrorless cameras that have the EVFs up there, you can even go parallel and there's no issue. The EVF doesn't hit the rear motor because the rear motor is pushed back. Now that we got that out the way, the next thing I wanna talk about is built in portrait mode. And for us content creators, especially as TikTokers and all that stuff, a lot of times you don't wanna use a regular gimbal because you gotta frame it horizontal, which poses its own problems, etc. This comes with an Arca Swiss plate in the box. And actually the Swiss plate is really dope because it got a lip on it. And the lip kind of prevents it from first of all, mounting it the wrong way, but second of all, it, it stops it. It's almost like a locating pin because it stops it from rotating, which is really, really good. But anyways, the reason I'm saying that is because you pull the whole unit off, camera attached, base plate, and the plate on the gimbal, and literally flip the camera on the side and mount it to the vertical rail on the other side. Obviously, you need to rebalance it, but being able to shoot native vertical content stabilized, using cameras this size and this capacity, honestly is like a breath of fresh air. So if you care about vertical shooting, definitely the way you wanna go. The next thing we need to talk about is built-in Bluetooth support. What I really love about the RS3 Mini is how you can connect this straight to the camera so you don't necessarily have to use a cable. There's some situations where you still need to, but you can actually press record on the gimbal and it'll start recording on the camera. On cameras it does work on, it's a great feature to have. Nothing is more annoying than having a gimbal in one hand and having to reach up here and press the record button and then have the gimbal get all shaky and all that stuff. No, press record on the gimbal, boom, it starts recording on the camera. Now you can also connect like a PlayStation or Xbox controller. I would never do this, but you can use the joysticks to control the different motors. Now, of course you can connect this to the Ronin app and the Ronin app, you can change all the parameters and you can actually set up waypoint tracking and time lapses built in because this does support that also. But there's one thing I really want to bring attention to. And that is involved in my S5 Mark II that I'm currently filming with. Now, if you use the supply USB-C cable and connect it directly to the gimbal, oh, you unlock a whole new world of stuff. Number one, built-in tracking. Now, the Ronin SC can do tracking, right? But you gotta connect the phone and you gotta do all that stuff. And with some other gimbals, you could get like the Raven Eye and you could connect it that way and get tracking. Well, the Panasonic cameras actually share autofocus data and gyroscopic data with the gimbal and 
you don't need the phone to do anything. All you have to do is connect the Panasonic camera with the cable, press the front trigger, and it starts to track you around the room. And honestly, it is one of my favorite things about this gimbal. I think it could take a little bit of tweaking, right? It's very jittery sometimes, and sometimes it just drifts off. But being able to do that with no additional software is, mm, yeah, you can actually program this thumb wheel on the front to control things like shutter speed, ISO, aperture, all that good stuff. You got the M button so you can set up your manual profiles and then you got the trigger on the front that you can lock the gimbal with. Since we're talking about like buttons and stuff like that, so I love that it has a 1.4 inch touchscreen. Like if you ever use the Ronin SC, like honestly all gimbals nowadays should have touchscreen. So we'll talk about this more later on. But the fact that you can control everything from the gimbal, just about everything, you can, you know, calibrate it, you can change your settings, you can do all this different stuff, set up your custom modes, you can do all that stuff from the touchscreen itself. So having a screen on the front is actually really, really ideal. Now battery life, honestly, I get about like 10-ish hours of use. Now battery life is going to depend a lot on if you actually have your gimbal calibrated and balanced correctly with the camera. If it's not calibrated and balanced right, it's going to use a whole lot more battery power. But I get about 10 hours and it takes about two, maybe like two hours and 20 minutes to charge from zero to 100. It uses USB-C. And the only other thing is the batteries are not removable. They are built in. But overall, battery life is great. The next thing, what about the stabilization? Because a gimbal is useless without the stabilization. So this actually uses DJI's third generation RS stabilization algorithm. Terry, what are you talking about? All the DJI's newer gimbals use this stabilization algorithm. And to put it frank, the footage is stable no matter if the camera is in portrait or underslung, if you want to use like the, the briefcase handle. But the footage is really, really smooth. And that's all I'm going to say. There's not a whole lot I don't like about this gimbal. I think the two things I would change I wish that the joystick was placed a little bit higher. I did find that when I'm holding it, the web in between my thumb and my index finger sometimes nudge the joystick. And I wish the grip was a little bit taller, but it is a super tiny gimbal. So I wanna talk value proposition real quick because the Ronin SC, and this, I brought this out for a reason, right? The Ronin SC also has a payload capacity of four and a half pounds. And the Ronin SC when it came out was about 500 bucks. Well, the Ronin SC now is 279 bucks. So it's actually cheaper than the RS3 Mini. And some of you might be looking on DJI's website like, well, why is this one cheaper and which one should I pick, right? So a few things that still make the Ronin SC special. Number one, you can take it apart, okay? You can only take the RS3 Mini apart a little bit. The second thing is the Ronin SC actually comes with a case. So it comes with a case and it comes with a lot more accessories in the box than the RS3 Mini does. And because of that reason, that's why I feel like the Ronin SC is slightly built more, in my opinion, for the professional. Right now, does that mean that the RS3 Mini can't be used professionally? No, I'm not saying that. But if you look at the Ronin, I mean, it's just bigger, it's more robust, and it lacks all of the bells and whistles that the RS3 Mini has. So a few other small differences. The Ronin SC actually has dual NATO rails, right? And I find that the levers and stuff on the Ronin SC are more robust than the ones that come on the RS3 Mini. So, I think both are great values, but you really need to ask yourself this question. Do you want the newer stuff from the RS3 Mini? Because having things like the touchscreen, having things like portrait shooting, having things like those enhanced Bluetooth controls, all that stuff are really, really like, those are features that, you know, you gotta have. Or do you not care about the touchscreen and maybe the portrait shooting and you want something that's maybe a bit more robust and comes with more stuff in the box and really is kind of used professionally. It also lacks the thumb wheel, which I'm not a big fan of, but neither here nor there. Uh, both are great gimbals, but I brought this out to really highlight the value, in my opinion, of the RS3 Mini. Because for 370 bucks, it's tiny. It's got the same payload capacity as the Ronin SC. It's got all these new features built into it. It can break apart. It's got enhanced Bluetooth. It's got portrait shooting. It's got the screen on the back. It's got the thumb wheel. You can use Bluetooth with the cameras. You can do even more functionality with tracking if the cameras are supported. And I just feel like, honestly, it's one of the best value gimbals out there. And it's of DJI quality, which says 
says a lot when it comes to gimbals. So in my opinion, if you are under that $400 price range and you're looking for a gimbal, the Ronin SC is a great value, but I think that the RS3 Mini, even amongst the competitors under 400 bucks around this size, I think it's the cream of the crop, okay? Anyways, let me know what y'all think down in the comments. I'm gonna be down there with y'all, just hanging out and commenting back and forth with y'all. So I would love to know y'all thoughts. And until next time, I'm out of here. Peace and chicken grease, tight shirt, Terry Warfield. I'm out. Peace.